particular matchup. Flaffy will be cheering us on, and whether you're out in the crowd or watching it at home, we are getting into things right now. Let's throw it down to the table and get into our final match. A farewell to the E-Block, and it's going to be in style. Snorlax up against Raichu. Nathan up against Dennis. Now, Nathan has been playing Pokemon TCG for a while and has really had success here with this Maridon EX deck. Dennis as well, a longtime player. Both these players actually having very similar pop ID, so probably started around the same time. Did have a run at the 2019 World Championships playing Malamar. Now, that's a very different deck here from the Snorlax deck. Yes, quite a different strategy for sure. Snorlax pretty unique in what it is aiming to do. Dennis drawing this opening hand here does appear to have a mulligan. But yeah, with just a couple of accomplishments there on this resume, I mean, without a doubt here, Nathan uh, Dennis's strongest finish up to this point, just getting to this final stage, and he's hoping to add a regional title to that list of accomplishments. So much stands in the way of both of these players. First and second, a big difference, especially this year with the auto qualification added. A lot of pressure off of your shoulders. And Nathan has won a state championship. Now that takes us back to before League Cups, yep. as well as a top four at the Salt Lake City Regional Championships. Has broken through that now. Best accomplishment of this player's career, but looking to make it, as you said, a regional champion, not just the finalist. Yeah, Nathan's a pretty solid player from the West Coast. We really only see him playing in a few tournaments a year. I've watched a few of his games over the years, but always is, you know, fighting in those day twos. He's made quite a few day two finishes. But yeah, once again, another player who, without a doubt, is having their strongest performance of the weekend, or of their career, rather, I should say. And it looks like our players do have their opening hands, their basic Pokemon set out. Let's see those ever-important prize cards here. Hopefully, neither of the players prizing anything too relevant. Six prizes being laid out. Oh, two Snorlax in the prize cards. Yeah, and that Mimikyu as well. That's actually a card that can be a big deal in this matchup. And Nathan prizing two copies of that electric generator. Yeah, not too big of a deal. Normally, you would hate to see two electric generators in the prizes as Maridon, but you kind of take a slower approach in this matchup, really just aiming to Manually power up, hopefully a Maridon. You know, that's what your best starter is as Nathan in this matchup is just getting a Maridon into the active spot and going from there. And uh, yeah, just attach to it three times and start swinging, start taking KOs, start dealing with these Snorlaxes. Yeah, Dennis here might have a little bit of pressure laid on him thanks to the fact of a pair of Snorlax being in the prize cards. Now he does play one copy of his Hisuian Heavy Ball, so that can fetch that one of those Pokemon out of the prizes, and he's also got Peonia in this list as well. Lots to talk about, lots to get into as we are set up and ready to start. Here we go, finals match, finals match for the Masters TCG here in Vancouver, and it will be Nathan starting action off with that Maridon EX in the active. It's one of the Pokemon you're okay having down against the Snorlax deck and already filling the bench up using that tandem muted ability. Yeah, I'm a little interested to see a bunch of Pokemon coming into play right off the bat. You normally don't need to be too pressured to put a bunch of Pokemon into play, but one strategy players can employ against this Snorlax deck is to just fill the bench with Pokemon they're okay having in play to try to play around the eventual Erika's Invitation, sticking something into the active, like, uh, you know, maybe something like a Flaffy in this specific matchup or that dreaded Squawkabilly EX. And there a key card comes down right away. Talk to us about this, Chip. Why yep. is Spiritomb so important here? Yeah, Spiritomb is a massive card for Nathan to put into play right away. It's fettered in misfortune ability, means that basic Pokemon VM play have no abilities. So Dennis normally is setting up his deck with the Rotom V, using that ability to draw three cards to end your turn every single turn. You're not uh, a player that's you're not a deck strategy, excuse me, that's uh, aiming to, uh, you know, attack every single turn. You're usually just passing with your Snorlax active, so you might as well, instead of pass, use that Rotom V ability. And you can't use that Rotom v, v ability thanks to the Spear Tomb being in play. We do see one of those two electric generator in the deck. Does only find one lightning energy. It's not too bad, though. You want to slowly get this powered up. This deck is playing a ton of energy. 14 lightning energy and one double turbo. We also see that double turbo in the hand. 
This game is all about resources, and here's an attachment we don't see a lot. Double Turbo Energy coming down yeah. onto that Maridon EX. Yeah, not too big of a deal, to be honest. Dealing 200 versus 220 into a Snorlax, it still means it'll be KO'd, even if a Bravery Charm is attached. Now we will see Nest Ball kick things off for Dennis. Has not yet had a Rotom V so far, so that can come down. We know that besides the Snorlax and the Mimikyu's, uh, there are no other Pokemon in the prize cards, but that's yeah. also got to be a pretty important note here for Dennis going through this deck on the first yeah, search. Yeah, and, and we just saw immediately Dennis kind of whew, realizing, hey, I've got a couple of Snorlax prized, and because of that, Hisuian Heavy Ball is brought right to the front of the deck. And that is one thing that can be an issue for the Snorlax deck in this matchup. You know, you need to be able to have a replacement Snorlax every single turn if you're anticipating your active one being KO'd. And while this start looks excellent for Dennis, has access to the Arvin in the hand. Already saw that Battle VIP pass. Now, Battle Pass has a lot less value here, though, because two of those Snorlax are prized. They are not yeah. available. And you can, of course, go and get the Rotom out of the deck, but like we talked about, Spiritomb means that will not be an option to draw cards. So Hisuian Heavy Ball definitely seems like a better choice here. The Bravery Charm, pretty interesting. You know, you can throw it on the Snorlax, but it doesn't really protect it from being KO'd by something like the Maridon EX. So we'll most likely see one of those Snorlax get grabbed out of the prize cards. But this is sort of an issue about this Snorlax deck. You really kind of struggle to consistently put on a lot of disruptive pressure when you cannot end your turn by drawing a bunch of cards, filling your hand up. Dennis will get the full news of these prize cards. We'll yeah. see that a couple of those are prized. And yeah. as opposed to getting the Snorlax here, I almost wonder if Dennis is just going to grab the Mimikyu. And he's really thinking about it. And you can see this is, <laughs> this is a tough call. Uh, the Mimikyu is pretty good in this matchup. There's only a couple things Nathan can do to hit it. We did see right away Nathan grab the Zapdos out of the deck. That is one option. And then another one is to use Mew EX's genome hacking. You can use that attack to copy your opponent's active Pokemon's attack. So even though Mew is a EX Pokemon, it can copy Mimikyu's attack, which places damage counters. It doesn't do damage. It places damage counters. So those are the two ways that, that Nathan can deal with the Mimikyu. It does seem like Dennis has decided to go with a Snorlax, however. Triple Snorlax in play, and a pass of the turn over. And there is a few interesting pieces. It does have that Lost Vacuum in hand, but that could be honestly a pretty big deal uh, to not use that to get rid of something like the Squawk Billy. Instead, it's going to hit the discard pile, and that's really not something you want Yeah, but with the full bench right now, I don't yeah. think you mind it too much. The thing that could come up is if at some point Dennis uses a counter catcher to bring up a spear tomb. The only real way that Nathan has to move that out of the active is to use its fade out attack, which pops it back up into your hand, which can be pretty solid. But if it comes back to your hand, that leaves an opening for Dennis to go for something like the Echoing Horn. It does find that lightning energy though. So there it is, Photon Blaster taking the knockout on Snorlax. And this is a very tough spot for Dennis. Does have another copy of that Arvin. Has a counter catcher as well. Mm -hmm. I feel like targeting down the Zapdos makes the most sense. It's not a super efficient attacker into the Snorlax. It's electric ball attack deals 110 damage. So it's a two hit KO and that's something you can withstand thanks to the 150 HP on the Snorlax. So the Nest Ball, the choice of the item. We will just see another Bravery Charm potentially. I'm not sure if Dennis has that Forest Seal Stone yet. Uh, it is a piece you can still use with something like the Pidgeot V, but putting Pidgeot V in play is also not great because yep. you're also blocked by that Spirit Tomb. Uh, yep, yeah, all of Dennis's Pokemon V to put in play really don't seem super strong. It does find the Luxurious Cape. It's kind of a catch-22 with this card. It does give the Snorlax 100 more hit points, so boosts it all the way up to 250. That means it will not be KO'd by the Photon Blaster of a Maridon, but it does mean that the Snorlax, Snorlax gives up two prize cards when it is KO'd. Now, Marida, usually a great attacker, but does have that effect on that Photon Blaster that it cannot attack the following Correct. turn. So, well, 200 damage in a burst is solid. It's almost like you're doing damage over time sometimes because you're just passing turns back over. Yeah, and we literally might just see Nathan immediately pass. I don't know. Uh, it does look like he actually has the Forest Seal Stone. He's got a few cards actually worth playing here, Electric Generator being one of them. It does hit two energy off Huge. of that, so... It's just going to be prioritizing, getting Maridon powered up. It's the most efficient attacker at taking one-hit knockouts onto the Snorlax. Yeah, even though you're attacking every other turn, it is still one of your best options here. You can KO a Snorlax, even with a Bravery Charm attached. Uh, and so having that as an option definitely seems solid. 
So the most interesting thing I'm thinking about here is will we continue to see energy drops, but it's going to just be one more electric generator, so this one doesn't hit any lightning energy, but for the two that you got off of the previous one, I think it's a fine trade-off. Yeah, Nathan definitely needs to be mindful of the energy attachments. He's got 14 in the list, plus the one double turbo. We already see that has been attached. With a ton of Pokemon in play, you want to make sure your energy cards are not spread too thin. Already starting to power up this Mew EX, and just saying go. Have fun with it, passing the turn back over. As we're going to see a Giacomo yeah. discarding this double turbo energy. That will force another resource out of Nathan this following turn. Yep, one of the only energy removal options in this deck, discarding a special energy from play. Ends up working out pretty decently here for Dennis and now has Countercatcher and is debating what to use it on. And it will be that Spear Tomb, and this lines up a potential problem for Nathan. Using that Spear Tomb's fade out does move it from the active spot, but that would give Dennis an opportunity to use Echoing Horn to bring something like that Squawkabilly from the discard pile into play, and that is an excellent target to stick in the active spot. Does find that four seal stone, though, off the top of the deck. And this is now an interesting choice. Do you still commit to not using fade out? Instead, using one of your precious, precious resources, one of those switching cards, it will just be the switch grab. There's already energy in the hand. Yep. And I think even holding on to a peony, if push comes to shove, you do have to discard your entire hand, but sometimes it's just worth that if you are getting the resources you need to continue putting on aggression. We will indeed see that switch. Nathan Beck really wanting to put on the pressure. A great strategy when playing against the Snorlax deck, especially when they're not able to utilize Rotom to stabilize. Dennis here with no great basic Pokemon options remaining in the deck. Two Snorlax in the discard pile, one remaining in the prizes. Just one Snorlax against the world at the moment. Can he find a way to pull this off? This is tough. It's going to have to commit the luxurious cape. Or surviving a knockout, but even that Raichu on the bench, if you can somehow get some energy cards onto it now, a lot of these electric generators have been used, so I'm not sure in one turn it can just kind of come out of nowhere and take this knockout. Yeah, it, it's definitely possible, though. Like you mentioned, that Peony is in the hand, so that can find something like the electric generator and escape rope, and then you only need to hit one energy from the generator. Nathan could win the game this turn. We'll see. I think the last generator might still be in the prize card. That is so a we're, good point. Yeah. We're going to see off this Ultra Ball what pieces are available. So let's take a close look. Let's see. There is that escape rope, but no electric generator. And speaking of switching outs, that is the last switching card left in the deck is that escape rope. We're also keeping track of the energy so far. Double turbo down and six lightning energy are in play. So still plenty of ways to power up these Pokemon. Just, yeah, so yeah. for Nathan here, a probably fine play would just be to attach an energy for turn to the Raichu and pass. You're not super pressured at this point to uh, go aggressive. You know, using an escape rope to not take a one-hit KO doesn't seem super strong. Also, using fade out does open up an opportunity for your opponent to just potentially win the game with some sort of echoing horn play. So we will see that energy being dropped into play. And I guess you may as well use the P... Uh, I guess you can just at least use Mew, right? Draw a couple cards and then... Uh, Peony is an option next turn. Yeah, we're just going to see sort of a bluff here, Nate. Nathan's saying, ah, yeah, I really don't have anything. I'm just going to keep attaching. And we're finally going to see Nest Ball. And, and this might be last resort. I think Dennis smells what's coming the following turn. May have to put a Pokemon into play. Even considering Crabominable, I guess out of all of your V Pokemon, that's probably the best one to put down if you can't take the Pidgeot out of play and you can't draw cards with Rotom. Yeah, I, I actually... Not remembering 100%, but I'm pretty sure Kerbomitol is weak to lightning. Or is it weak to metal? I think it's weak to metal. It's is nice it weak to metal? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yep. So that will be something that can soak up a hit, right? You can put Bravery Charm on it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it has 220 HP, so with the Bravery Charm, you do withstand a Photon Blaster. But actually having to use the Forest Seal Stone means that you can't even, you know, get that Bravery Charm as an attachment. So one card of Dennis's choice coming to the hand. V-Star power used for the game here for Dennis. But I, I'm trying to think in my head here, Chip. There's no real one card that bails Dennis out from what looks to be pretty tough. And yeah. it's going to be a 50-50 here. Going to Peonia hope to find these Pokemon that are in the prize cards. Let's see yeah. what Dennis takes. Yeah, there's no one card that helps him, so he has to use Peonia to find three of them. And does find two excellent cards, the Mimikyu and the Hisuian and Heavy Ball. But now comes the hardest choice with Peonia. you got to put three cards back as well. And... There's not a lot of cards in the hand, and you want all these resources that you can keep. 
It did get the heavy ball at least, so that can find another Snorlax. Mm -hmm. An easy send up off of a potential escape rope. Now, one other thing to mention about putting the, you know, Curbomitable into play is that that becomes a boss's orders target for Nathan. Of course, the thing that makes Snorlax so annoying is its block ability. That is what is preventing something like the Spirit Tomb in the active spot from simply being retreated out of the active. But if you use boss's orders and bring up the Curbomitable, you can attach, retreat, and then take two prize cards thanks to its 220 hit points. Finally going to see Peony come down. Any two trainer cards can come into the hand for Nathan. Yeah, we could see that Pokemon Catcher come up. Nathan did discard one, but has another one in the list, and that is what he is debating here. A 50-50 shot to bring up the Cribomitable and get yourself the retreat option. Would need an energy card still to retreat his active Pokemon. So that is also another thing worth noting. Yeah, smart choice there to also grab the escape robe. The only really way that Dennis can get rid of that card is if it's in the deck with Misfortune Sisters. So right. making sure that it's safe may come down to just having that last switching card to get him over the finish line in this first game. Now this Big flip heads. Now this is a wow. big draw here. Yeah, this is a little risky to be honest. He needs to find an energy card in order to retreat this active spirit tomb. Otherwise, it's an opportunity for Dennis to just use Penny to pick up this Crabomitable, and I don't see the energy card here. No, really not worth playing that escape rope either. And it's just going to be a pass over. Can Dennis find a Penny? There's only a couple cards, but has the switch card in hand. That's a big find. That's going to be one more resource out of Nathan's book of tricks to be able to bring this Crabomitable up and let him sort of switch one of these active Pokemon that Dennis is trying to trap out of the active spot. Yeah, Nathan is probably thankful to see that it was a switch card and not a Penny picking up this Crabomitable because that Crabomitable now will stay in play. That means boss's orders can find it later on. Good thing that escape rope was grabbed. Not going to be a danger of being discarded. Dennis does play that Misfortune Sisters. Getting rid of Ultra Ball, not too relevant. You're okay to have those cards get discarded. This turn is passed back over Nathan. Ugh. One card too late, but now does find that Lightning Energy. And with the Mimikyu being active, can still retreat this active uh, Spear Tomb. One thing, however, is uh, there's nothing that can attack the Mimikyu, so we actually will just see the fade out. Bring the Spear Tomb up to the hand. Dennis, though, only has a couple of cards in hand. Nathan really just taking a risk here, saying, I don't think you have it. You don't have Echoing Horn in those two cards in your hand. See what this deck truly is when it's not able to consistently draw cards without that Rotom's yep. instant charge ability. We are just going to see the Penny, though, so that does pick up that Kerbomitable. A great play Nathan had lined up was Boss's Orders in the hand. That Zapdos' Lightning Symbol ability would have boosted this up, and now we're just passing back and forth, but this is good for Dennis to slowly build this hand up. Do we see another energy, though? We and do. we do. And I think it's time for Nathan to put on the aggression. We're going to see the retreat into the Mew. It does discard that Lightning Energy. It is a resource later on to keep track of. And here we go. Genome hacking, copying the Mimikyu, placing seven damage counters on it. Thanks to that, uh, Bravery Charm it is out of range of being knocked out for the moment, but yeah. one more of those genome hacking and it will be knocked out. Yeah, Mew is honestly a pretty solid attacker overall in this matchup. It knocks out the Mimikyu if there's no Bravery Charm, and it actually also knocks out Snorlax if there's no Bravery Charm, because Snorlax's Collapse Attack deals 150 damage. You do have to flip a coin to see if you can wake up, right? Collapse does put you to sleep, but you've got two opportunities to do it, right? One's going into your opponent's turn, and one's coming back into yours. So Mew, honestly, when I've played this matchup, Esmeraldon has been one of my go-to attackers. Just going to pass the turn, accepting Mimikyu's fate. It will go down this turn to another genome hacking. And Spirit Tomb comes yeah. right back into play. That was the one window there for Dennis to maybe shift the momentum into his favor. Yep, no Echoing Horn able to be found. Dennis forced to send this Snorlax up. Has a Counter Catcher in hand. Probably brings up the Zapdos here. That two retreat cost. The three energy requirement in order to be able to attack. And there are quite a few energy cards in play right now for Nathan. A couple in the discard pile also. I believe we're at nine total in play, so there are still five energy remaining. Uh, and trying to do the math, so if we put three on the Zapdos and then one on each of these Maridons, there's technically one fewer energy in play. I believe there's not enough that one Pokemon could get stranded. Okay, here we go. This is the last switching card. The escape rope now being played from Nathan does force the other Snorlax into the active. This one has that luxurious cape. 
Nathan having to debate what to send up here could just go with the Raichu in order to take two prize cards on this Pokemon. Would have to discard a ton of energy yeah. cards from play, though. Is this worth it? It feels so risky. Maybe if you still had one more switching card left, I would get behind this play because you can at least pivot well, that last time. I mean, Nathan knows that Dennis's hand is not great. He's not been using Rotom. He knows two of the cards in his hand are Force Seal Stone and Crabomitable, right? Yeah. So this sets up for the win on the next turn, forcing Dennis's hand. Dennis has to find a response right now. Otherwise, he will immediately lose to this Raichu. Does Dennis find it? And it's it's a Penny! Gonna, it's gonna Penny. his only Pokemon in play. Honestly, you gotta respect it. Dennis going out on his own turns, terms, and Nathan here gets the win in game one. And owed to the 2015 National Finals of AZing up the Whaler. A respectable way to go out. Oh, wow. I mean, look, it just sat there, it did nothing. It was just staring menacingly, but it was that Spirit Tomb that was the MVP of that match for Nathan really just did not allow Dennis to put together much of a strategy at all with that draw being shut off. Yeah, really solid game planning, I think, here from Nathan overall. Dennis maybe got a little unfortunate with those prize cards, forced him to go for that Hisuian Heavy Ball early, but really it was the Spear Tomb is the big deal in this matchup. Yeah, that Pokemon Catcher could have definitely made things a lot worse than they ended up being, but at the end of the day, Nathan had just enough resources to go for that aggressive play. A little bit of a gamble, but it paid off dividends, allowing Nathan to knock out that Snorlax with the luxurious cape with a big dynamic spark attack from this Raichu and finish it up by doing it one more time. Nathan going up 1-0. Will he become the third player to, or the second player to win a North American regional. He's the fourth player to make it to a final so far this year with Maridon. Will he be able to take it home once again? Yeah, Maridon has been excellent thus far this season. Will it cap off its time in the E block on the E on format with one final victory as we head into EUIC? And one thing that we have to continue to take note of here is that clock. Now we've only cut off about 25-ish minutes, 20-ish minutes in this clock, but that was sort of a weird game. That game didn't really last a while. As we continue to progress through, the clock is only going to benefit Nathan. The clock is Dennis's biggest enemy here in this finals. Yeah, we definitely need to remind the viewers at home about how the time rules work here in Top Cut. Now, normally, if you get to a game three situation, right, let's say that Dennis finds a way to win this game, you know, is able to lock Nathan up, you know, get a Flaffy stuck into the active spot, something like that. Dennis eventually wins, decks Nathan out. We go into game three, say there's, you know, 15, 20 minutes left. The game lasts for quite some time, and Nathan is uh, able to take a prize card or two. As long as Dennis does not uh, deck Nathan out before the end of those plus three turns, it becomes the first player to, you know, be ahead on prize cards. And that would, in that instance, of course, be Nathan. You know, Dennis only plays one single energy card, and it's for that Crabominable's attack that does zero damage. So we would not expect to see Dennis take any prize cards. We're getting right back into things. Here we go. Game two. Nathan starting off with a nest ball, and you're th he's considering, do I just grab Spiritum and put that into play before I get down Maridon and set my board up with Tandem Unit? But decides that it's a little bit more important to make sure my Pokemon are in play. Will be the selection off the Nest Ball. Maridon EX, Tandem Unit, and immediately grabbing another Maridon and a Zapdos. But I think those last two bench slots are probably going to be for what we saw last game, Spiritomb and that Mew EX. Yeah, but with the shuffle of the deck, okay, actually Nathan's saying he's going to go back in here. I was wondering if that meant that there was going to be uh, no other Pokemon search available here, but it does look like Nathan has an Ultra Ball. This can go get the Spear Tomb now. The problem here could be that I think the best cards to discard in hand here for Nathan are a pair of Pokemon. This is opening up a one-turn window here for Dennis to potentially find an Echoing Horn. Yeah, out of all the Pokemon to be Echoing Horn back, Iron Hands is not the worst. It's not the worst. It does still have that Arm Press Attack for three energy that does 160 damage, and there it is. Feathered in Misfortune hey. back online. And hey, talk about Fast Charge. We can get some more energy into play, too. Yeah, the rarely used Fast Charge on the Raichu V. Actually putting on quite a bit of pressure here, threatening a knockout next turn with the Dynamic Spark. But what does Dennis have available in this hand? I, I don't think there's anything really going on. A penny? It's just going to be a pass. <laughs> Has to bench the Rotom to not lose the game by having his lone Snorlax get knocked out. 
What is happening here? <laughs> Dennis even throwing the Rotom off the table. You know, he over-circuited, he short-circuited. <laughs> I mean, we're about to short-circuit back here because yeah. this is a tough spot here for Dennis. Now, did put that Pokemon League headquarters in play. That can be a, another piece of this puzzle that we haven't talked about yet that can be annoying for the Maridon deck. It makes all basic Pokemon's attacks cost one colorless more. So that means that Nathan is going to have to commit extra energy cards to each of his Pokemon if he wants to attack or find, of course, a counter stadium. And these generators are big. The more energy they find, the more pressure Nathan can put on this turn, but does find two energy off of both generators combined. And there is an energy card in the hand, so we could be seeing Dynamic Spark take out the only Snorlax in play on turn two of the game. Yeah, that would be a pretty aggressive line. I don't know if that's necessarily worth it, however, uh, because if Dennis just finds something and is able to stabilize, then you run the risk of just having too many energy cards already being discarded. We're thinking about it. There's yeah. also a switch in the hand, so could There's also a boss's orders here, oh, so you could wow. go this route and just capitalize, make sure you take two prize cards, and that's exactly what Nathan is doing, giving Dennis the one-turn window here. What does he find from the top of the deck? It's a nest ball. That's a pretty good one, and he's also got a counter catcher in hand. Does get another Snorlax down into play. I was debating maybe if Mimikyu would come down to maybe buy a little bit more time, but hey, this is the whole strategy of the deck, right? Block your opponent's active Pokemon, not allow them to attack. There is a counter catcher in the hand. So I think Dennis is just debating, do I try and buy some time? And uh, the tough thing is bringing Spiritomb up if you don't have a follow-up is really just not a play. It just only buys you one turn, and it will be the Zapdos brought up into the active spot, and we're going to be Silening. It's a double tails. Wow. <laughs> Not able to bring back any card. Would have loved to at least get another Nest Ball to maybe get one more Pokemon into play next turn. Now Nathan draws for turn, finds Peony. That can be a great way to, you know, go through the deck and find the Switch card and put on some aggression, but no, is just going to pass it back and forth. I don't think you can afford to put that Luminion in your discard pile if you do not have the guaranteed out to put Mew X into play. And with this Ultra Ball, I think Nathan is now going to finally maybe start yeah. using this Peony. A little bit of a heads up play. No needs to get overzealous. You've got to understand your lose conditions and yeah. that Luminion is not your friend in this matchup. Yeah, I don't know that he, if he had another Nest Ball to guaranteed grab off the, the Peony, maybe didn't have another one available. So just chose to play it safe and was rewarded by finding Ultra Ball just the next turn. He does use that restart does have a switch and an energy. Just commit the energy to ride on, and we're just passing it back and forth. This is going to be this right. kind of a game. But this is okay. Uh, Nathan is okay to just keep attaching energy, use restart over and over again. We will just see some of these tool cards come down. There's no reason to really just hold them in your hand. And this is sort of how this game is developing back and forth. Look at these top decks, though. Keeps finding energy cards off these restarts, and here we're going to see it. The switch into this Maridon, and it's just going to be... Nope. Oh, oh, can't take a knockout. Okay, wow, that wow, committed that switch. That could be yeah, that's a, a big little deal. bit of a big deal. Yeah, the Pokemon League HQ up. catching Nathan here a little bit. He actually had Peony in hand, and it would have wow. been a, a pretty nice turn. Okay, this could be the opening. Dennis needs to fight back and get back in this game. A little bit of a misstep for Nathan, burning one of his only three switch cards a little too early. He does now have to discard that boss's daughters. That could be a valuable card later on in the game. And there is only two switching cards left in this deck. We'll see if they both get grabbed here off of the Peony. I wouldn't hate that. I think also grabbing probably a stadium, stadium card yeah. as well. Guarantee so you don't have to yeah, guarantee the attack. You can also uh, put an energy card somewhere where it's more efficient. So you can attack later down the line. So this place seems fine to Nathan. You can play Peony another time. Maybe get that escape rope. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, Nathan had the Peony in hand with that switch, so he very easily could have just switched, played the Peony, gotten the beach court, and then even the, another switch card, right, to yeah. guarantee that it was safe. That would have been pretty strong last turn, but, you know, got caught, uh, you know, not quite keeping track of everything. You know, that Pokemon League HQ slowed him down. And energy now being placed onto that. Zapdos understands it's gusting target number one, most likely. Snorlax goes down. And what does Dennis have to respond? It's the same situation, it yep. feels like, as last game. A couple of V Pokemon you do not want to put into play. And that Forest Seal Stone, Dennis is yet again with his back to the wall, down a game in the Masters Division Finals of the Regional Championships. Things are not looking good. Does at least have the Counter Stadium. 
it's better to not let your opponent have that beach court. And Crabominable again comes down, and Star Alchemy is used. What one card can bail Dennis out of this tough position he's in? Yeah, a replacement Snorlax for when this first one inevitably gets KO'd. It actually looks like Iono is being eyed up as well. That could be what Dennis just has to go for. You know, a hand refresh knows that these three cards he's got remaining are really not working for him. So let's find six more and just hope that that gives him a few more plays. Now, this isn't terrible necessarily because, of course, the Maridon did use that Photon Blaster attack right. last turn. Cannot attack so this turn. Can't attack, so kind of give yourself six cards. Hopefully, you can find something to work with a little bit better. Not even worth playing that Pal Pad. No real supporters to yeah. put back into the deck. Maybe the boss's orders, but it's just not worth burning that resource yeah, this early. Yeah, he's still got plenty of counter catchers at this point, so it doesn't really need to worry about it too much right now. Did find another Iono for next turn, but I think that's about it. Just confirming everything has been used properly. And passing the turn back over. What does Nathan have off of these four cards? It's actually a, a very solid hand here with these four cards. Yeah, he's got that four seal stone, has a pair of energy cards, and also the peony in order to discard the hand and find a switch card if he wants, but doesn't really feel pressured to do any of that right now. Just chooses to pass and knows that this photon blaster will be live this coming turn. Let's find an Arvin, looks like, off the top of the deck. So you can now grab one of these tool cards to maybe put yourself out of range of being knocked out by a Photon True. Blaster. Luxurious Cape, that will do it, as well as a Nest Ball. And now the choice is, which Pokemon do you put down? Do you put Mimikyu into play, or do you just get another Snorlax into play, and it will be that Snorlax hitting the board? Yeah, we'll put that Snorlax down. Mimikyu's kind of tough whenever your opponent already has an energy on the Zapdos. That's a pretty quick and easy way to deal with it. We will see the Bravery Charm be an option. Luxurious Cape hanging out in the hand for a moment. And the Countercatcher, going to hope to stick something active here. Will it be Spear Tomb once again? Considering the Maridon, I don't hate this. It's not able to attack for a couple of turns. And I mean, time is what Dennis needs in this position to get himself back into this game. Yeah, eventually hoping to lock something into the active spot. Nathan draws return, and it actually does uh, yield the Escape Rope. But this is tough to play this escape rope down. He could. It's going to be your last switching card, so it's a little bit tough. He does have the option to boss his orders in a future turn with that Crabominable being in play. That's something to think about. Could always be pennied up, so that's always it the is, fear yep, you got to think about. It is a about. risk. It is a risk. So pretty simple choice. He can never really bring the Crabominable up here. It's just a free two prize yeah. cards for your opponent, it feels like. And they're just going to go on to one prize. All they need is just one attack to knock out your Snorlax, and they will become a regional champion. Yeah, Nathan sending up this Muraidon EX. It's set up to be able to take this knockout. Does put this for a Seal Stone into play. One more prize card for Nathan Beck. The draw for turn from Dennis is that Misfortune Sisters. Not going to help him out here. Has to go for the Iona. And this is tough because you're not playing Penny, so that Crabominable is just going to stay on your bench. A huge liability. Let's see what Dennis can potentially put together. Maybe another counter catcher card. You know what Nathan know. drew for turn? What did he find? Pokemon catcher. Could it, it come all down? come down to this coin flip right now? Pokemon catcher. Let's see flips it. Flips the coin. Heads. And it is a heads that brings up this Cribomitable retreat into the Raichu and Dynamic Spark taking the two prizes. Nathan Beck, the Vancouver Regional Champion. Doing it with Maridon going all the way. Your last E-Block tournament champion is Nathan Beck, finally becoming a regional champion, and congratulations to him. It is worth noting, you know, it was very exciting to see the Pokemon Catcher flip. Nathan did have the Forest Seal Stone in play, so as long as one boss's orders was remaining in the deck, he, he did have it guaranteed, but why not go for the Pokemon Catcher? Go Give yourself the style. chance to win in style, exactly, and that's what Nathan has done. Congratulations, of course, to Dennis for getting to this point. A second place finish at a massive tournament like this is nothing to scoff at at all. He's going to walk away $7,000 richer, 160 championship points, tons of booster packs. Definitely an accomplishment he can hold his head high for. Wow, what a set. Not a lot of action, but that's sort of how it happens sometimes. You play these games out, you're working hard, you got some things that are down that you really don't want to see in play. The Spear Tomb, definitely a big card for sure. That was down during that final game. We even pointed some arrows at it, showed, yeah, this thing is uh, not very good news for Dennis.
And there was some luck on that side too. Pokemon Catcher bringing up Cribominable. Now uh, Nathan this was a did turn. not find yeah. that energy this turn. That would have been almost game sealing if he had found it in that specific turn. It gave an opportunity for Dennis to try to fight back, but yeah, overall it just feels like Nathan has a few too many answers for all of Dennis's tricks. And really Spiritomb is the big one. Yeah, just not being able to draw cards makes it so difficult. That makes the Snorlax deck so much weaker when yeah. you're only getting one card every single turn instead of, you know, draw for turn plus the three from the Rotom. Truly game breaking. That's what it came down to at the end of the day. Spiritomb was there and it scared Dennis's Rotom from ever coming down into play. I mean, it was just the pure aggression. Went out in style game one, back in the tank for game two, but I mean, you can kind of see it on Dennis's face there, kind of reeling his head a little bit saying, yeah, I mean, nothing really went great that game, but it's going to take a lot for me to have a really successful start. We saw a few misslips there. Now, Nathan did try to attack under that Pokemon League headquarters, but even with the extra switching out burned, it really didn't end up mattering. It was just too much, too fast, and without much of a response on Dennis's side. Nathan Beck becomes a regional champion in the Pokemon TCG. And I know he's been playing for a while, probably working towards this moment, probably thinks about this a lot. I mean, this is a goal for a lot of Pokemon yes. TCG players is to become a regional champion. And he can now say that he is one. Was able to do it in style as well. Pokemon Catcher heads to KO the Abominable V from the bench. Congratulations to our regional champion, Nathan. And all smiles on his face. No reason to not. You're $10,000 richer. And listen, you can kind of sit back, relax for the rest of the season. Yeah, because that guess, world's invite. Yeah, guess where you're going? You're going to Honolulu, Hawaii for the summer. That's a pretty good vacation trip. Yeah, I'm sure Nathan is going to be excited about that. What a great uh, prize as well. You know, of course, the money is awesome. But yeah, giving yourself an opportunity to just prove yourself on the biggest stage, to truly immortalize yourself as a world champion. Oh, it's excellent. I mean... That was a set that had a lot to really break down. We sort of saw the spirit to him put in a lot yeah. of work. And yeah, I mean, you can yeah. tell it was definitely a favored matchup for Nathan coming in. It was going to be kind of a difficult uphill battle for Dennis. He did what he could, but yeah, just not being able to use the Rotom makes his deck so much weaker. If you want to see really what Dennis's deck is capable of, you definitely should watch that top four match yeah. we, we featured earlier, him being able to take down Lucas Zing with his very powerful Gardevoir EX deck. Yeah, I'm a little heartbroken. You know Rotom is one of my favorites, so there was a chance that Rotom could become a North American.